Are you guys ready to make some baked ziti today? That's right. I went out, did all the shopping, filled the basket full, got all the ingredients necessary for my Amma's secret recipe. This is how to make the best baked ziti out there. And then I taught Chef how to make it. I hope he doesn't mess this up. So let's all find out together. You know, I gotta thank Benson for giving me a secret family recipe, but it does make me wonder. He said his ama gave him this recipe. Ama is like Norwegian, Norse, like Viking. Like, is there something about Benson he's not telling us? Are there secrets in his past? Kind of makes you wonder, don't it? Not to mention the fact that if he's Viking, how is he giving me an Italian recipe from his grandmother or his ama? I guess we're gonna find this out together, right? So let's get started on making this meal because, you know, baked ziti is almost, it's almost like lasagna without the layers. Because I mean, you've got a lot of the similar ingredients and you got a lot of the happy tummies when you're done. So let's get started. For the ingredients for this guy, we're gonna need a pound of ziti. Now you can get a smooth ziti or a ridged ziti. The difference is on the outside of it, there's there's extra spots for the sauce to stick to so that way if you like a little more ooey gooey in your pasta go for the ridge i mean is it gonna make a huge difference no but if you've got the option go for what tastes better right so we got our pound of ziti i've got a whole onion we're gonna chop up i've got a pound of ground beef I've got a pound of Italian sausage. This is the mild, but you know, don't be, if you want to put the hot in it to put a little little kick up on this, hey, nothing's stopping you. Make this how you like. But we've got a pound of sausage. I've got two things of marinara sauce here. That right there ought to set it up nice now. You, you know, you gotta love uh, simple mistakes. We grab these off the shelf. One of them is a tomato basil, and the other one is just marinara. Is it gonna make a world of difference? No, I just think it's kind of funny how when they stock shelves, sometimes things get mixed up a little bit. Now for cheeses, I took the lazy way out this time. Yes, butter. this is just about everything store-bought on this one. But we've got our Parmesan, we've got our provolone, and we've got our shredded mozzarella. There's the cheeses for this. And then of course I have a cup and a half of sour cream. All this together makes, oh, such a good little dish. So step one, let's get the pasta boiling because, well, that takes a little bit of time. You don't want to overcook it, but you got to cook it some. Of course, to start boiling pasta, well, you've got to start boiling the water, right? So flame on. Now, to the water, we're waiting for it to boil, but I'm going to go ahead and put in about, it's probably about two tablespoons of salt. That way, you know, you get your salty as the sea, as they say. Although I really don't know what the level of salt in the sea is. We're just using two tablespoons of sea salt. They got it from the ocean. We're gonna put it right back in the water. Makes sense to me. All right, and while we're waiting on the water to boil, well, let's go ahead and get our sausage a cooking too. We'll just get our frying pan heating up. That's right, we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of things all at once. While we're waiting on this to get hot and that to boil, well, let's cut up an onion. And for that, that's right. My big old Cutlicks knife. I don't know why I really like this knife. It just, it feels good. Is it really too big to cut an onion? Yeah, but does it really work good? Yes. Hence why there's a link in the description because again, I really like this guy. All right, that guy's starting to warm up. Time to set these in there. And like I said, we're gonna cook the sausages until they're done because well, could you, uh, decase these and mix them in with the ground beef? Of course you could. There's no law that says you can't cook the way you want, but by doing it the way I'm gonna do it, I'm actually gonna slice these up and set them in it later. You'll see the process. Just trust the method, right? The madness is always there. Now, chop chop of the onion. You know, the nice thing about the curve on the end right here is as I'm doing the onion, the way the curve goes up, I can cut it all the way flush and it doesn't make it to the end. Kinda nice. So now we got our onion chopped. I can go ahead and set it to the side. Let's see, let's flip our sausage. It hadn't been long, but 
I'm one of these people that just like to constantly flip it so that way nothing ever burns. All right, and the pasta's boiling. Talk about everything coming together at one time. So let's go ahead and dump all this stuff in there. Into the pot you go. And don't forget to stir, otherwise your pasta is going to stick. All right, now the pasta is going to go for about seven minutes. That's about half of what they say to cook it. Like if you were just to make like spaghetti or something, that way it still has some texture to it. We don't want it to get rock, not rock hard. We don't want it to get mushy and soft because we do need some texture as we're making all this good old baked ziti, right? All right, sausages are done. And I know this from two ways. One, I took my knife and basically stabbed into the casing and you can see the juices are running out clear. That's a simple way. The other way is to actually put a meat thermometer in it. And yes, we're, we're at about 165, 170. We are good to go. So I'm gonna pull these guys off. And now we can add our ground beef. Go ahead and get this situated down in here. And we can add in all of our onion. I mean, after all, it tastes good together. Why not let them cook together? All right, so while that's going, I'm gonna take my sausages here and basically cut them down into just bite-sized pieces. That way when we mix them in and we find them later on, oh, they taste so good. Mm. Now you've noticed while I've had this going on, I haven't added any salt, pepper, oregano, or nothing. Nothing stops you from doing it. Honestly, the way this lays out on its own, the marinara sauce to me has got plenty of flavor in it. I don't need to add to it, but you know, again, everybody's palate's a little different. Like I say, if you wanted to make the spicy sausage, if you wanted to put a little more oregano in there, if you wanted to put, I don't know, gold flakes in there so it looks all pretty, make this meal yours. I don't know about the gold flakes, but make this stuff yours. All right, pasta has been going for about seven minutes, pulled a bite of it, and it's got that where it's just got that little bit of crisp on the inside, but it's still pretty tender on the outside. We're gonna go ahead and drain it. We steam facial. Now at this point, I'm not gonna do anything with the pasta other than just let it sit over there. I'm not gonna rinse it, I'm not gonna oil it because I want everything to stick to it. It's just gonna kind of misbehave itself in the sink for a little while. All right, hamburger is just about done cooking. We're gonna go ahead and start prepping the rest of this. So I'm gonna take my marinara sauce. Oh yeah. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pour actually a little bit of it right in here because without it, when you put the uh, when you put the pasta down in here, it can actually stick to it. So let's see, get the right spoon. Let's see, I want just enough to where I can basically coat the bottom of the pan red. All right, good. No sauce shall hit a naked pan. So now I can go ahead and pour this whole thing in here with our pasta. Not just one, mind you, but two. All right, we'll give this a stir to coat all the noodles up because as they're sitting there, like, like, like I say, since we're not quite cooking them all the way, they're actually somewhat sticky. And so by doing this, it allows the pasta to soak up all of that there tomato flavor. Oh yeah, good stuff. All right, now let's slide in all our sausage here. Now again, if you didn't want to do the, uh, the regular casing style sausage, you could have gone ahead and cut it out of the casing or even got like the breakfast tube and mixed it in with the ground beef. But to me, this just gives it a little bit of texture, a little something extra that way when you're eating it, you get a bite of this, a bite of that, you know, know your flavors. All right, let's go ahead and cut this off and we can start scooping up our ground beef and setting it in here. Could I pick up the frying pan and do it? Yes. Is the frying pan really hot? Yes. I got more patience than I do the ability to go to the quick care for a little bit of burn medication. All right, now let's get all these flavors married together. Oh, this smells so freaking good. Now let's go ahead. Now that everything's mixed, not done yet. Sour cream time, ready to pour. All right, and unlike a hundred layer lasagna, with this, you basically have two big layers. We're gonna take and scoop in about half of this into the tray. All right, layer number one. Now let's go ahead and cheese it up. Now I'm gonna start with a provolone. That way, well, hate to say it, but this is thin cut and it's a little bit of a pain to lay out, so it's gonna take a minute. So that's when we'll start with this. All right, one down. Now mozzarella, because everybody loves a good cheese stretch, right? 
And of course, Parmesan, because you got to have that sharp flavor to go with all of this goodness. And before you know it, you're asking yourself, where'd the pasta go? Don't worry. That's why you still got another whole half of it right here, ready to add to the top. You know, the hard part about this is making sure you're balanced out enough to where you didn't put too much on the first layer so that you don't have enough for the second layer. But the other way would be there's just barely on the bottom and too much on the top. In this case, nailed it, perfect. So now, more provolone. All right, mozzarella. Uh-oh, run out of mozzarella. Good thing I got more, hold on. Oh yeah, come on. You think we're gonna run out of the stuff around here? And of course, Parmesan on top. And we are built and ready to go. Now we're gonna set this into your 350 degree Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius stove. We are cooking this for about 30 minutes. Uh, basically right about the time the top starts to brown will be just about right. I highly recommend you put a drip pan under this because this is A, a large dish because B, it's gonna bubble, it's gonna goo, it's gonna drip, but it's gonna be so good. So let me slide this into the hot box and I'll see you back here in about 30 minutes. All right, straight out the oven, bubbly and happy and oh so good. Now, this is where preference comes in because these little brown spots that are here, they add quite a bit of flavor. I know there are folks who like them, those who don't. But if you wanted a little more of these, we could put it back in here, let it broil for two or three minutes. But I got a better idea. We treat it with fire. Is it overkill? Of course, but it's fun. And besides, I gotta figure out a way to use my Christmas presents, right? So now I'm done. The only problem is I can smell it, I can see it, but you've got to let this thing cool down. I mean, you need at least 10 minutes of rest time, if not a little more. Otherwise, I mean, yes, you can scoop it out right now and serve it, but everything inside of it is so molten, you've got liquid lava in here. So give me about 10 minutes, let this cool down. I might even get a thumbnail shot and I'll be back for the serving part of this guy. Oh yeah, stand by. All right, time has passed and I am hungry. So let's slide this mess of goodness out of here. Ooh, look at that. The cheese that's on this thing is no joke. And neither is my appetite currently. So guys, we are digging in. We are gonna, we're gonna get a whole big old mouthful. I gotta get a piece of sausage. I gotta get the cheese top. It's a giant bite, but it looks just right. So I realized there was one problem. I don't have enough. This guy's is good stuff. I'm gonna grab me a, a heaping help full here. And I'm gonna go sit on the front porch. And I'm gonna have me some dinner. So you guys take care. I'm gonna go out there and get a little fat and sassy. And while I'm sitting on the front porch, I'm gonna know that Bigfoot is real and my tummy's gonna be happy. Y'all take care. You can get a smooth ziti or a ridged ziti.